Hi, thanks for joining me. So uh, today I'm going to do a vlog and it's uh, in response to a request um, by Gary Coleman uh, in the comments of my last video. And I just want to say thank you very much for making that request. I have talked about some of these things in my videos before, so some of this might be repeat information for some people. You know, if it is, if you want to skip it or something, I don't uh, hold it against you. But um, I know that this is going to be new information to some people, and maybe some people will find it interesting. But I'm just going to talk about my history learning Japanese. I did do a video about continuing your Japanese education as a, as a second language, um, but I don't really cover specifically my personal history learning Japanese in that video, so that's what I'm going to do here. So for me, I started learning Japanese in college. This is going to be later than uh, a lot of people, but you know, it's one of those things where it's like it's, it's better to start early. It's always better to start early with these things, but it's also never too late. I mean, I'm I'm over 40 now, and I'm, I'm continuing my Japanese language study, so, you know, and, and that's, that's not a problem. But yeah, so I started in college, uh, taking college level, you know, courses. I just took Japanese 101. Um, I, I guess I'm going to share specifically, I did my language study at uh, the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Um, I, d I didn't attend UMass Amherst, but, uh, but that's where I did all of my Japanese study, and I, I did essentially two years. It was like, you know, the one the one classes and the two classes. I don't think I got into the three classes, but I did two full years. It's an intensive Japanese language program. And at the end of those two years, I ended up uh, visiting Japan. I didn't really end up. <laughs> I went out of my way to do so. So, you know, what, what got me started was basically getting into anime. I didn't get into anime until I got into college either. So, um, because of that, I, I kind of ended up meeting like other people attending college in that area and at my school who were also into anime. And I ended up hanging out with like the Japanese exchange students and things like that. So, um, we it was sort of a natural transition, I guess, uh, into. Uh, starting to take some some Japanese courses, uh, it just it seemed like a fun thing to do, and uh, you know it wasn't it wasn't like overplayed at that point, I guess. You know, I mean, and, and that's I mean, I don't know if it is overplayed. I mean, it doesn't matter if you want if you, if you want to learn Japanese, just learn Japanese. Um, but it was it was fun. It was just something new and fresh and interesting. We're like, hey, you know, why don't, why don't we give this a shot? So um, you know, me and one of my other buddies. Um, started the Japanese classes together and uh, uh, yeah you know so like I said after a couple of years I I looked into because the school didn't have any sort of way to exchange to Japan or anything like that but there were other colleges that did and I found a program at Michigan State University that you know of course was mostly uh, used by Michigan State University students but anyone could could apply for it so I applied for that and I went to Japan. They have a school there. I studied at that school for a couple months, you know, two, two and a half months, something like that, during the summer. And then we, then I basically traveled around Japan after that. So um, we we were in Hikone, and uh, I traveled to Nara, and we took a trip uh, as a class previous to that to Kyoto. Um, the plane went in and out of Osaka, so I had to go back and forth to there. Uh, I took the Shinkansen to Tokyo and hung out there for a while. And, um, yeah, you know, I just, I got to travel around. Um, I also got to stay with a host family for, uh, not the whole time, maybe like a month, month and a half of that, of that period. So that was fun. You know, I got to, to interact with a, like a Japanese family setting. And I also got to, like, I had to visit friends, you know, like a friend from school uh, who was back in Japan for the summer. Uh, I got to, um, you know, I, w I would, like, ride my bike to the, the train station, take the train to, you know, the town where I would 
was going to school and then take another bike to the school. I would do that every morning while, you know, while I was staying with the host family and stuff like that. So it was fun, you know, I got to um, just sort of be immersed in the culture a little bit and, and the people. Um, and that was great. And then I got to travel around too. I got to like visit Tokyo Tower and, you know, just go to various play. I hung out in, in Akiba um, way back then. <laughs> And, you know, again, I guess just to put a fine point on some of this stuff, this was in this was in the late 90s, the mid to late 90s. So, I mean, I guess when I was there, that was in the late 90s. So that was, like, probably 1998, somewhere around in there. Um, so, yeah, so I was, I was really enjoying that um, study. But I ended up leaving school. And, you know, it's kind of too bad. And, and, like, I don't want to get... I don't want to get too deep thoughts, and I don't want to get too negative, but I mean, honestly, my headspace has been there recently. Um, and I don't know, I mean, it's like, a lot of things haven't gone super great, you know, for me at various times. And, um, you know, it's almost sort of sad that, like, I was, I was, I was enjoying that aspect of, uh, of what I was doing with my schooling at the time, and, like, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't keep doing that at the time. So, um... So I basically had nothing to do with the Japanese language for a little bit, except that what got me into the language was, of course, like anime, and to a certain extent, video games and things like that. Uh, I've mentioned before that my buddy imported uh, some games from Japan and some of the game systems. So we had some Japanese games, and I wanted to be able to play them. And I, I played them a little bit, but of course, like, I mean, man, even all of that, Japanese study and doing, you know, a couple of years in college. I mean, you can't, you can't read a lot of this stuff very well. So, um, so, you know, there I was. And I got into fan translating video games. Um, I talk about that in some videos about fan translating video games on the channel fairly recently. And there, there's another channel that I have that, you know, if you guys want to know more about that, I actually talk about my personal experiences with that. Uh, there... But suffice to say that um, that is like the one thing, the sort of the, the lifeline between myself and, and the Japanese language that was able to kind of keep me involved in it for a long time. I mean, it's been like 20 years now, so um, that's kind of insane. You know, I'm going to be fully upfront. I, I may have I may have oversold my uh, abilities at times, um, even just, you know, on this channel, <laughs> um, you know, it's tough, like they say, only by learning do we realize how little we actually know, and I, you know, going into starting to learn Japanese again, I knew that, you know, I, I knew that I was going to feel that way, and it's, it's one thing when you have a level of knowledge, and you can just sort of focus on what you know, like, it's great if I can play a, a game in Japanese, and I know... X number of things, and I feel like, oh, I know a lot about this, like, I can follow along with the game, and it's fun, and et cetera, et cetera, but once you start learning, and then you start feeling a little bit more on the hook to, like, know the things that you don't know, and then you start fixating on the things that you don't know, and you realize, like, there's a lot of things that you don't know, and uh, it's just one of those things, but um, a handful of years ago, I've, uh, because I fan translated for so long, um, and let me bring this up to you. So I've been involved with 28 released fan translation patches for video games so far, and actually a handful of them recently uh, I actually just did a little bit of technical work on and didn't actually do the translation for some of those scripts. I actually handed off to a different translator. Um, so it's not a super accurate representation, but let's say at least probably about 25 uh, scripts for video games I've translated that have actually been put into a patch format that you can apply to a game and play them in English, uh, unofficially, of course. Um, and, uh, you know, and in addition to that, I've, I've translated dozens of other scripts that either, you know, have not made it into a released patch yet, or possibly never will, um, you know, or I'm, I'm working on a handful of scripts right now. So, um, so that's where I've, I've gained a significant amount of experience and it's a little tough to gauge what that gives you sometimes because another thing I wanted to do and this is where I was going a 
few sentences ago, is a few years ago I decided that I wanted to get a gauge of where my Japanese level was. And at the time I assumed, oh, like, I'm, you know, I'm probably kind of a stone's throw away from being able to pass, you know, N, N1 or N2, you know, somewhere in that range. But I figured, you know, like, let me go N3 or N2, probably somewhere around there. And I'll just I'll just see if I can pass one of those, and then I'll and then I'll figure out what I need to study in order to get to like to N one, where I you know anybody would like to be. That's sort of a that's like where you kind of know the general vocab and, and kanji that like the everyday use kanji. Um, you'd be able to read like a newspaper or something like semi competently. Um, that's sort of just like a base level of Japanese knowledge. So um, so I took N three. Uh, these are tests that are administered by the Japanese government. Um, they're administered in the United States, I think, once a year. Maybe it depends on which city you're in, but I think it's only once a year. In Japan, you can, it's like a couple times a year, a few times a year, or something like that. So yeah, so a handful of years ago, it's probably more like four or five years ago now, I passed N3. And I decided that I want to take N2. So that's what I'm studying for right now. Um, and again, it's not necessarily under the best of circumstances, like, I'm scared right now, a little bit. All things considered, I'm not really in an existential crisis right now, but it feels that way sometimes. And, you know, I'm, uh, I have time to study, so I'm, I'm studying kanji, I'm studying vocab, and it's going fine. But, um, you know, there, there are, there are real things, um... I, you know, I was just taking a look at my stats. I'm using this site called Renshu.org, and I talked about that in my video about continuing to study Japanese, and um, it's it's an awesome resource. Like we didn't have something like this in 19, you know, 96 and 97 and 98 when I was when I was studying. Um, you know, the the web was super new at that point. I mean, if people were making web apps, it was stuff like eBay and Amazon. You know, it wasn't like some guys thing that he developed so that he could study Japanese better. You know, I'm, I'm a bit of a technical person too. I think it's closer to six or seven. Uh, years ago, I, I wrote a, I wrote a translation memory in PHP. So it's basically just a place to enter in phrases and words that you've translated, and then you can call them back up again. So it honestly, it works a little bit like Google Translate. But it's just an aid to help me with translating things. So um, I did that to help me with all of the fan translation that I do. And like I said, that's that's a... I mean, I'm building sort of two levels of experience, I guess. One, I'm building a, a translation memory, which is like is a database of all of these translations. Um, and not all of which are like mine. I mean, I do... I look things up in dictionaries a lot, and but then I sort of figure out, okay, how am I translating this line in this particular context and put that into my translation memory. So um, because I'm sort of externalizing that, um, you're, inter you're internalizing some of that too. But that's why, for instance, in my previous video, um, I had to look up a lot of vocab, more vocab than I was really comfortable with having to look up for translating a little bit of, you know, the Renai Adventure, Horror Adventure uh, game there that I played. Because of the experience that I have translating a lot of games, um, I think that that, help, that helps inform, like, how I choose to put some of, how I choose to phrase certain things into English. And I, and I think that, like, that 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 amount of experience does, um, you know, does make my translation a little bit better than it would be otherwise. Um, that said, you know, there were still lines, as you guys should see in that previous video, that even when I like sat down on my computer, I'm like, okay, well, I'll look up a couple words if I don't know what something is. Like, I still was just like, I mean, I, I could sit, I could have sat down and like translated that out so that I like, but I would have had to like research the line, you know, like a lot of times you have to do that, you gotta, re so you gotta sit down and research a line, you gotta, f if something's a little confusing, you gotta, you gotta figure it out, and um, so I just, I didn't want to take the time to like do a 
kind of a semi-professional you know, translation for that. Oh, and, and speaking of that, I, I have done some professional translation as well. So around when I took my N3 and passed that, um, some people reached out to me because I had a profile on a translation website and they were like, hey, can you do some translation for us? We see you're, you're on the site. And I'm like, yeah, of course. So we, you know, we talked sort of back and forth and like I got set up and I did, I translated a, a PSP game. I didn't translate the whole thing. I translated, I was, it was probably me and like maybe 10 other translators. It was, it was a bunch of translators. And, um, you know, I worked super hard on it and I think I did a good job. I got paid for it. Um, you know, I turned my things in on time and all that stuff. Um, and that was all... Like, the reason I did that and the reason I felt I could do that is because of the sheer amount of fan translations that I've done. I've, like I said, I've, you know, I've probably translated at least, you know, 35, 40, um, you know, scripts for, for, for video games. Uh, you know, of various lengths and, and sizes, some of them very long, some of them very short. Um, so I felt like I could do that, and I did fine with that. But I would like to... To do more paid translation and in order to do that you know I'm, I'm feeling insecure I guess you know right now um, and I don't think that I can't do that and I don't think that I can't get there uh, specifically I think I'd like to do some more translation with this particular uh, company that I worked with because I mean honestly they didn't pay super well but uh, but what I was working on wasn't it just it was just, it wasn't gonna make a lot of money. I don't, I don't think they ever released it either, so uh, there's that. What I'm staring down right now is um, is becoming a, a professional in a new field and that's uh, that's a it's a big step. Um, I you know in my own way became a, a web uh, you know professional. Uh, I did that for over a decade. So at least at least around a decade, well, around a decade of basically, I guess, working in the industry. Um, and, I, you know, I know how I got there. Um, a lot of it, you know, some of it was schooling and a lot of it was self-study. So uh, Japanese is, is going to be the same way for me. Some of that was schooling and a lot of it is self-study. And I think that I am perfectly capable of getting there. And I think that I'm super close. Um, I mean, I've already done some professional translation, so, you know, there's that. But, um, but, you know, part of me as I'm studying for N2 here is just going, I, I really want to pass N2, and I really want to pass N1. Um, I don't think I'm going to wait, you know, I'm not getting any younger. Uh, next year I'm planning at this time, you know, next year they'll be administering the test for, for N, N1. And I'm planning to sign up for that. I'm planning to take it, pass or fail, N2. And I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to pass it or not. Um, this site that I'm using tracks some stats. And in it, it has, uh, you know, I've, on that site, I've studied about 1,000 kanji, which is where you want to be for N2, as far as I know. And then you're going to study about another 1,000 kanji for N1. So, um, you know, I need to double my kanji study. But at the very least, I know I've been introduced to, you know, around a thousand kanji, and I, I feel pretty good going into N2 with that. But I know my weak point is vocab, and uh, just looking at that site, uh, just tonight, literally, I was like, oh, I wonder how many vocab words you want to know for N2. It's probably a lot. And I checked my stats, and I'm like, ooh, I've got about 1700 vocab words studied on, on that site and that's not necessarily all the vocab words I know because you know I've been involved with the language for quite a while and and that wasn't all just drilling on this site so I don't, I don't even know what specifically it was probably stuff that I studied for maybe for when I took N3 but I didn't really study much for N3 so I don't know um, but anyway so I've got about 1700 uh, vocab words logged on that site and you want to know about 6,000 vocab words, as far as I know, for N2, and that sounds about right. Um, if I finish studying what I'm studying right now for vocab, that's going to bring me up to close to 3,000. Not quite, but it would bring me up close to 3,000. And, you know, I feel like if, I, if I've studied those 3,000 on this site, and I have my what, however many more words that I know, 
that I've just never studied on that site. Um, what are my chances of passing N2? I don't know. Uh, I feel like they're probably pretty good, but um, that might not be enough. I mean, I don't, I don't feel like I'm going to have those 6,000 vocab words clocked, you know, by the time I take this test in like three weeks. That's, that's just not going to happen. So um, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But uh, like I said, irrespective, it's, it's really just a gauge of your progress. So um, it, like I'm just going to keep studying. I'm not even going to find out the results of that for like a couple of months. So I think I'm just going to keep studying for N1 and get in. I, I didn't even look up how many vocab words you need to know for N1. It's probably another 6,000. But you know, anyway, probably maybe 10,000 words. Who knows what? Somewhere in that range. I don't know where this is going to take me right now. There are some very practical reasons why I want to just be better at Japanese because of things like that game <laughs> that I just played for you guys and stuff. I would like to be able to, you know, read that with, um, I mean, at least the level of uh, comprehension that I was able to provide to you guys by going back. I, I re-recorded that whole video and I re-voiced over the whole video having looked up a bunch of vocab that I didn't know so that I could, you know, give you guys a better, just a better experience watching the, the video. Um, but you know, even that, like I said, I'd have to sit down and study some of those lines and, and I'd, I'd like to get to a point where, you know, I can more competently than I can now go through a game like that. Uh, just for my own personal enjoyment. I want to be able to enjoy Japanese media in Japanese language. Um, but I think I would also like to try working as a, a translator. And I mean, there, there, there's, there's all kinds of different types of jobs that you can have uh, in terms of that. I, like I said, I just I don't know where that's going to take me. In fact, I, I just... I, <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to even like really drum up a whole lot of positivity about it, but I just I don't want to think too much about it. I think what I want to do is just is just study, and um, I'll I'll worry about the rest of that stuff later, you know. Um, but th this this whole next year I'm I'm nervous about. You know I don't know what I'm going to be doing for work. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to be making money. You know I know I want to take N N one at the end of it. But I don't know what that's going to get me. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty in my life right now, and that that that's generating a significant amount of anxiety for me. It's a different kind of anxiety than I had, you know, a couple few years ago when I was dealing with a a more pressing and kind of like physical anxiety that was that was really uh, bothering me a lot. Um, but this is just you know again, it's more of existential. Like I guess I'm just like. Uh, what what am I doing with my life right now? But anyway, we're we're, you know, I'll, I'll try to bring you guys along on this together, I guess, without, hopefully, you know, giving you guys too much information or bumming you out too much. But um, but I appreciate the opportunity to talk a little bit about uh, my experiences learning Japanese. I know, you know, a couple other few people, you know, are also you know that watch my channel are learning Japanese, know Japanese to some extent. I mean. When you when it's a second language, you you never you never know everything. You know you don't. I mean, even if you're a native speaker, you don't know everything. Um, but uh, you know, so there are other language learners uh, who watch this video. If you guys want to, you know, I, let me know what your experiences are specifically, or or make you know make a response video. I'd love to hear about that because I don't I don't know. You know, I don't know everybody's story. I don't know how you guys got started, and uh, or even necessarily where you feel like you are now, and. Uh, I mean, even some people that I think, you know, are know Japanese a lot better than I do. I mean, I don't know. I don't even know if I don't know if they, have they taken. You know, have you guys taken N one? You know, I don't, I don't know. You know, I mean, I assume I assume some of you have. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, that's that's all. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, wish me luck in a few weeks here at passing N two. Um, we'll see how it goes, and I'll catch you guys later.